Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode where today we are creating our new design to help finish off the Onyx Watch. Now, this is a sort of design I have built countless times before, but almost exclusively just for the design mode or for the adventure mode, never really for the campaign. So, I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more difficult than I originally think it's going to be, but hopefully, we're going to have something rather fun at the end. Today, I want a water skimmer melee craft, which is designed to kill an enemy without completely destroying itself. We already have our nukes, we have other small ramming craft, but now we're going to have a proper one. So it's likely going to use things like the custom jets, it's going to use hydrofoils in order to simply bounce along the water, and it's going to shred everything in front of it. So the only two choices we really have for melee are things like the spin blocks, which is most likely what I'm going to go with because it doesn't cost any engine power or anything else, and I always have great success with these. Or, we could use something like, if I go over, I think it's the steam? Whoa, I forgot how much this has changed. Here it is, the drill. I honestly thought it was in the steam section for some reason, clearly very much mistaken. So, with this, it is very interesting. It's very cool and looks very menacing, but every time I've used it, all I thought to myself was, the spin block was doing better for far cheaper, and it doesn't require power. So I probably won't go with this this time, but I think I will try in the future to have a craft which is dedicated to this. For now, I do think the spin blocks are probably going to be the way to go. So, how big do I want this thing? I think, as a cost, 150,000 resources as the absolute maximum, and probably aiming at somewhere like 10,000 volume or something like that. We're likely to have some secondary weapons, perhaps some missiles of harpoons, and perhaps maybe some small advanced cannons for some rapid fire, just so we can do some damage on the Y. Now this thing is going to be useless for aircraft, so if we do want to build another Ramcraft in the future, we are going to need to build it from scratch. So let's get a basic blueprint done, and let's see how this thing's going to look. So maybe the idea could be, let's just put down my current saved spin blocks, which are down at the bottom. We could have a couple which essentially sweep at the very bottom. And then have smaller ones on the way up, so we have a sort of gradient like this. That way we should be able to hit pretty much anything, no matter how small it is. Since we are facing off against some smaller Onyx Watch craft, well, this still will be very effective versus the larger as well. The one problem is, we are going to run into the issue of um, all these spin blocks hitting each other and hitting the frame itself, so that has to be worked around. The other question is, are we going to have a proper engine? Currently, we can get away with just having a small jet just um, in the center here, but if I want this thing to have any PID using any of these, the jets and everything else, the smaller jets that is, then we're going to need a proper engine, which would allow us to have a shield for once, which would be pretty nice. Not too sure. I think it all depends on the cost. Right now, it's looking pretty small. We could make it a bit larger and a bit more of an investment for once, which would be quite nice. Maybe we should. So maybe something akin to this. So what's going on here is we just have the two here sandwiched, then we have a one space gap where we can attach all the places where the spin blocks are actually attaching to, and then we have the top and bottom spin block. We then have two on the sides so that we can catch pretty much everything else. There'll be rams all along the front in case anything doesn't get hit by these directly because the whole craft is going to be constantly moving. And this allows us to very easily keep on adding armor to these without getting in the way of the spin blocks themselves. It looks a bit of a mess though, I'm not gonna lie, that does look a little bit ugly, but... Okay, that shouldn't have actually been turning us, so clearly I've messed up- Oh yeah, I've messed up the top one's rotation, that should be the opposite. But this should allow us to be very stable, it's gonna make us very front heavy, but if we do invest into this craft, we could add a proper engine back here, lots of storage, we could add some shields, some missiles, proper secondary weapons. And I think this is going to work out pretty well. And having these pretty much just go along the water as well allows us to add the hydrofoils nice and easily along the spine of the craft, which should let us have a very stable movement. And right now it's also very cheap, because again, these things are just very, very cheap. I'll work on how it looks, but this is the basic premise I want to go with. I've had um, the rams vertical a lot of times as well, so this time I want to go with something else. Since normally I place them like this along the sides, that that way you can stack them a lot easier, but let's go with this for now. 
Now one other thing I can mess around with is the piston. Now I'm fairly certain that there is a white flyer craft which uses a combination of a spin block and a piston on a turret, I think, something like that, which essentially has them point at the enemy when they're close and move around a saw blade or something similar to that. Now we are going into the territory though of having the double turrets and such which do sort of not abide by the laws of physics on your own craft so I do tend to try and avoid them but this would be the time to use them. So we could add a couple of those perhaps somewhere. So when we're close enough to the enemy, they activate, they go out of the craft, and then that way we're doing constant damage, even if everything else is perhaps stuck. That would provide a lot of consistent damage. And would allow us to continue with this kind of shell look, which I'm trying to go for, without having problems. That might actually be a good way forward here. Maybe, I will consider it. So at the cost of a little bit of the blade's surface area, I suppose, we have super armed up the bottom and the sides and the core itself, which means the blades are going to be very, very hard to knock off before they hit the target, which of course is the whole point of the craft. The hydrofoils are going down, they're actually going to form a kind of bed all the way back to here, because I think I know a way to make this a lot more balanced in the water, which is just going to be nice to watch. The question is, how are we going to do the rest of the craft? One thing we could do, which is going to make it look a bit spacecrafty, is we could potentially have sort of mini wings near the back. So just go back on both sides and continue like that. Would be different. There may be smaller ones at the front. This would allow us to have a lot of space as well for our roll controls and actually cheat a lot of extra internal space. Not sure though, we'll see as we continue how much space I actually need for this thing. Right now, if we just strapped an engine to it and some really basic um, control systems, this thing would probably work. But I want it to be a little bit more than that for once. Some nice basic harpoons there at the top. Um, they're actually being mostly hidden away via mimics. It may not look like it, but... They're actually very exposed, but I want them to look like they were kind of armoured up, so that's just the way it is currently. So we have those there, then we'll have an advanced cannon which will not be all that well defended. Yeah, I may have to sacrifice some hydrofoils here just to, ha just to have a few layers of protection for it, and that's going to go all the way up here with the turret cap flat against this section. And it's not going to be particularly powerful, probably a 100mm or smaller, just rapid fire cannon, just so we have something we can use. Especially if we give it the, where are you, mantlets, if we give it the 3 meter or the AI. Probably the 3 meter since we are going to be also fighting enemies at water level and this is quite high up. Just gives it a bit of versatility. Then I have to figure out where everything else is going. I mean, we have space for the engine at the front if we wanted to. That might be a little bit exposed though. We shall see as we continue. Tiny little gun, 500 rounds per minute. Yeah, I mean... For how cheap it is, that's okay. The whole point of it is it's just an anti-air, just general purpose anti-anything kind of gun. Not much damage per shell, but enough armor piercing that even metal armor will be taking the full damage. Okay, yeah, that will do. I mean, look at it, it's tiny. Tiny little cannon. That brings our cost now to 42k. Originally it was 150 at max. Really, if I, if I keep it under 100, I'll be very happy. So then we can use multiple of these. So I just need to make sure this is all well enough armoured. Then I can add the engine just in front of it because there's enough space. Then we can start adding the jets to the back to give this thing propulsion. Then comes the more difficult task of figuring out how this thing's going to move properly. Also, I think I've armoured up something incorrectly because one of the spin blocks is no longer spinning. So this with the hydrofoils just set so they're always on, and as you can see, it's not exactly pleasant to watch. And honestly, not really functional, so obviously we need to make some changes to that. Also, just having the thrust a little bit more balanced would help as well. I've only just plopped these things down just so I can see how everything's working out with the drag and everything else. Honestly, it's not as bad as I thought, so this should be a little bit easier to fix than I originally thought it would be. And I'm actually tempted, rather than having one major jet at the back, what we could do is have two custom jets, one here, then one on the other side. So remove some of this armor plating, uh, put down 
the custom jets, so they're somewhere like that. Just putting down the default ones, here's one, so... You know what, that might be better. No, I think a centralised one would be so much easier to armour up and everything else, though, and there is plenty of space here. Yeah, no, I don't know, one of the two. Maybe. You know, one day I'm going to do a build and know exactly what I'm doing the whole way through, and on that day, the world will get even more messed up. So, some really basic settings are now in play. It's going to be faster than this and not pitching up, at least trying to pitch up all the time, but it's working. And that's the default settings, and we hit the target. Okay. Although the jets are now underwater, so yeah, the jets are going to be a little bit further up since the center of mass is going to be up. That way, that won't sink. I'm also going to add some propellers to the bottom of the craft, so if we ever do get like this, it will kick in, and so we'll end up above the water again. So, okay, not a bad first little attempt there. Turn off, thank you very much. I'm actually really liking how this thing is turning out, um, looks-wise. That's rare for me. Not sure how I'm gonna armor up this jet. And honestly, I quite like it being exposed so we can see it. Um, obviously, it's not finished yet. It has no attachments on the side. I literally just put down some jets so I could see if it'd work. Needs more ammo as well on the craft. Okay. Okay, some basic propellers at the bottom now. So even if this thing isn't moving, it will constantly try to get itself above the water. I will add more to that as we continue. Also, I think I messed up earlier when talking about the mass. We're adding more mass to the top, so that's why I'm adding an extra thruster. Essentially, I'm balancing between three, because I think it looks better. Bit more weird, but yeah, I just like how it looks, honestly. Yeah, that works. And you can see the fans at the bottom really trying to get this thing above water. Yeah, against smaller targets, that's going to really just shred them apart in seconds. Good to know. We had a bit of spare engine power, so rather than the shields for now, we've invested in a couple more torpedoes. So it's spawning the warden for now. Don't want it to fight. Only using torps. And by torpedoes, I meant to say harpoons. Well, one missed a stationary target somehow. Um, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, we are moving almost 50 meters per second. Actually, yep, just about hit 50, just on the back of those um, harpoons. Pretty much guarantees a hit. I love how it kind of jumps onto the target most of the time. Yeah, um, again, for its cost, this is doing really well. Ah, the harpoons are actually taking up more engine power than we have now. They're really expensive harpoons are, but I do love them. They're missiles and melee. It's a beautiful combination. We're almost done now, really. It is just basic balancing and a few other tweaks, and the craft is finished. And honestly, I like how it looks. It looks pretty white flyers, just more blocky, some more my style. So I'm happy with that. But I'm thinking we should spend more on it. Uh, it's going to come in vastly under budget, which is... Again, so rare for me. It's currently only 75,000 resources. My goal was 150 at most, 100 as a goal. So what should I add more of? I can add another engine, but then that would compromise some of the armor. We could add more missiles as an actual weapon weapon. So some EMP missiles, just some small missiles or something. We could add some more backup systems. There's a lot we could do. Also, did I just completely block that one engine? Yes, I did, because I'm a dum-dum. There we are. I don't really know what I want to add to it. Um, originally I wanted shields, but I've came to the conclusion we're going to be fighting against Onyx Watch for a while. I don't really want shields there. As much as they are using Cram and everything else, Cram is good against shields, and I don't think we'd have enough engine power to have shields far enough away the explosion wouldn't hurt us anyway, and we don't really see enough small arms fire on the front to make it worth it. Some lasers might be good, but then we don't have the space. So I don't know what to add. I really do think small missiles would be perfect here, in fact. We've got a chunk of armor here we could easily just bore out. It isn't actually protecting anything except for the top jet, which is the weakest. Could just have someone on a delay, just fire up, have him on delay, then they activate, go forwards. 
little sprinkles of EMP all over the target, that would probably weaken them. Sprinkles of EMP. Hmm, that sounds... Not intentional. I should have fixed... Ooh, pretty. I should have fixed the pitch problem now. So here we go, lots of little shots. Doing very little. Wow, the harpoons hit everywhere. A lot of the rope snapped again. So, ooh. I think what's happening there... Oh, that is beautiful. So I think what's happening with the rope snapping there is the missiles themselves are a bit too large and moving too fast, and they're actually breaking the block they're trying to connect to. So I may need to scale down the missiles, but that was so perfect. <laughs> oh, that gotta hurt. Oh no, I had God mode and I thought it turned it off for the test. Slightly annoyed. Oh, I know what we need. Anti-missile stuff. Just distraction sticks. Because otherwise this will happen. You took two to the face. Okay. And this time, no god mode. Destroyed some of our spin blocks. Oh, some at the back as well. Oh my god, all the missiles are hitting. Turned off the gun. Destroyed the gun. But we don't care. We live. I mean, more making it turn than anything else, but still. Oh, good to know the armor was decent on this thing. Hmm. Can it beat the Iron Cordon without any missile defense? If it gets the right angle, it might be able to. Yep, yeah, yeah, that is the angle. That is the angle I was talking about. It tries to drown it. It's going to cut the back half off. Yes, it wins! Even though I forgot to add anything to do with missiles, look at how chewed up this poor thing is. Just about one. Yeah, get hit by your own missile for some reason. So it turns out there's a little um, section here, which I completely forgot about, this cavity at the very front, which was just acting as a buffer zone. But I've just added a small internal blade. This will give us some momentum, even if we're stuck in the water, which will happen after we hit targets. I've also changed the AI, so now what will happen is that after we hit a target, if we bounce off of something else, rather than just going in circles, which will never work, we're going to run away to 200 meters and then do another attack run. With all that out of the way, the craft should now be essentially finished. The only things I need to do is the detection system and any minor tweaks. So a final proper test, and then I'll do all the tweaks off camera, and the next campaign video will definitely have this thing, which needs a name. So for our final test, our little ramming vehicle versus a craft... Um, that looks weirdly glitchy. Why are these ropes going all the way over here? And then all the way back. And then connecting to our harpoons. That's that's interesting. Anyway, uh, this thing costs uh, five times as much and it's almost ten times the size. But I did spawn them in quite close. This is like the best case scenario for me in the campaign. Maybe wouldn't even be able to get this close. But either way, I just want it to be a quick test. If we get hit by crams on the way in, it's pretty much game over, honestly. Thankfully, that was a miss. The EMP has hit one. The gun's actually turned off there from the harpoons, which is great. And we actually got many harpoons to land. Now, spawning in that close, unfair. But in a fair fight, I would have five of these things versus the bulwark. If we're going on volume, again, almost ten times. I think. What's the bulwark again? 38,000, yeah. We're not even at 10,000. The little internal fans are definitely helping. I can already see that. Yeah, some spikes on the top and some spikes on the bottom I think would help out a lot as well. But, um... Yep, yeah, that's doing exactly what it should do. It looks like it's doing very little, but I keep on looking at the damage counter and it keeps on increasing. Oh, am I finally stuck? Seems like we're now just pushing it underwater. So what's got stuck, I wonder? What parts have actually jammed up? Is it these little corners? I might just need to have more spikes and just more spin blocks all over the thing. We're going to drown it. Yep, too low. We are actually going to drown this thing. 
because of our internal fan, which is still working. Shh. Only dreams now. So still needs a little bit of work. It can't quite go all the way through a bulwark, apparently. But it did kill it in a very horrifyingly glorious manner. Welcome to the Legion, little melee craft. So a little bit of work still needed, but the basics are all good. So upon closer inspection, what actually happened is that this section here had got stuck on the bridge of the bulwark. All of this had gone through, we'd gone completely through, but that's just not enough because the bulwark is a huge craft and apparently is much taller than we are. So we just couldn't fit through without all this stuff getting stuck on the top. So the solution really would just be to add rams up here, try to make that look decent so that we are doing damage as we're moving forwards. Only a little bit was actually stuck, but it was enough to completely stop us in our tracks. Really happy I, I added the internal fan though, otherwise that wouldn't have worked at all, so glad about that. So in conclusion, I'm actually really happy with this craft. I'm unsure about the advanced cannon, I might swap that just for more missiles or something else, or more engine power, there's lots we can do with that, or some distraction or defense stuff. If we added some rams to the top, that wouldn't have got stuck. Simple as that, that's all that happened is this section here without the rams got completely stuck against the bulwark and we just couldn't move. So what you really need to do is add rams to the top, rams to the bottom, which is a pretty easy task, but then use mimics to try and make it look decent again, because I actually quite like how this looks. I know it's blocky, but that's my kind of style. It's a bit brutalist, and I am happy with that. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And as an update for those who don't follow me on Twitter and such, uh, right now I will be getting back to my normal uploading schedule probably in the next week or two. I have actually suffered a loss in my immediate family, so for the last week I've been just taking some time to get my head in a better space and deal with the aftermath of everything to do with that. Obviously that's an ongoing process, so I am a little bit out of it when it comes to being able to record and being able to sound cheery at the moment. I'm sure you all understand, and I will be back as soon as I can because really... I miss making videos the second I'm not making them. So thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and do take care. Until next time, goodbye.